So you may be burning a couple hundred calories less than you think that you are, and you think you're in a calorie deficit, but you're not. So I got a question today from someone who was hoping to lose weight, but was concerned that maybe they were dropping their calories too low and that that might cause them to actually hold on to fat and go into something called starvation mode. Now, this whole idea of starvation mode is based on the idea that metabolism could possibly slow so much that you wouldn't be able to lose any weight and in fact would start gaining weight. And this is something that never happens. In fact, anecdotally, if I could point out something in real life, so if you've ever seen any footage of people from like foreign countries and war-torn countries who are undergoing famine, they end up being just skin and bones, right? So if there was some mechanism that would prevent that, we wouldn't see actual starvation. And you do see people starve and die. Okay, so there's that. But I think to really understand where this myth comes from, we have to understand a little bit more about metabolism itself. So there are a lot of different components of metabolism. So there's your basal metabolic rate, which is just how many calories your body needs in order to survive. So this is what your organs are gonna burn, not any exercise or moving around or anything like that. And then there's the exercise component. So how many calories you're gonna burn moving around um, with planned activities, such as going to the gym, going on a run, cycling, things like that, actual exercise. And then there's something called NEAT, which is non-exercise activity thermogenesis. This is what your body burns when you're fidgeting, when you're pacing. So you're doing activities that aren't necessarily planned, but you're still burning calories. And then there's the thermic effect of food, which is how many calories it takes for your body to process and digest food. Now, there are ways that your body can adapt to a calorie deficit and burn fewer calories. So for instance, BMR, your basal metabolic rate, can drop a little bit your NEAT can drop a little bit, right? The amount of energy you're burning in exercise can drop because you get tired. And because you're eating less food, you don't require as many calories to burn that food. So your metabolism can slow down a little bit, but we're talking about something like maybe a couple hundred calories. So adaptation to a calorie deficit does happen, and that's usually mediated by, for example, hormones. Thyroid levels drop, testosterone levels drop. You also see a change in appetite hormones. So leptin's gonna drop. Ghrelin, which makes you more hungry, that increases. So it gets harder and harder to stick to that calorie deficit as well. So you kind of have two things happening. On the one hand, you're burning fewer calories. On the other hand, your brain and your body is telling you to eat more. So what happens here is that a lot of people think that they're in a calorie deficit, but they're actually not. So you may be burning a couple hundred calories less than you think that you are. And you think you're in a calorie deficit, but you're not. And if you were to continue to drop calories down, then ultimately you would get into that calorie deficit and you would lose weight. So really there are two culprits here. And one of them is just not being able to adhere, not being able to be compliant because calories are pretty low at this point and you can't stick to them. And the other thing is usually that NEAT will drop. So NEAT isn't something that you really think about. It's just how much energy you're expending walking around and maybe pacing, stuff like that. And so you aren't trying to reduce that. It's just that when you get really tired and fatigued, you move around less. You might find yourself leaning on things instead of going for that walk late at night. Instead, you decide to go to bed early. So you end up burning fewer calories and then you have the hard time sticking to them. So what's a person to do in this scenario who really wants to lose weight, but they can't seem to stick to the calories and they can't seem to lose that weight? well, maybe you shouldn't be trying to cut as hard. So maybe you wanna start on a little bit higher calorie level and see what your body does. I've seen plenty of people who can't seem to lose weight on something like 1,400 or 1,500 calories, one, because they can't stick to them, two, they're so lethargic, they're not burning as many calories. When we bring those calories up to a more realistic and achievable level for them, maybe something like 17 or 1,800 calories, they're able to actually eat that amount of food and they have more energy. So they're going to the gym, they're killing it in their workouts, they're burning all this energy, they're still able to go on those walks at night and the magic result is that they in fact start losing weight. And so they might think to themselves, well gosh, when I was on 14 or 1500 calories, I could not lose weight for the life of me. But now that I'm eating 1800, I'm losing weight like crazy. The thing is, it's not magic. Again, you're able to stick to those. And finally, you're able to feel good and you're able to exercise and you're able to continue to burn that same amount of calories that you were hoping to burn. So for those of you guys out there who are hoping to lose weight in a really quick manner, 
that just might not be realistic for you. It might not be the best idea. Um, if I were you, I would go ahead and start at a little bit higher level. But if you're not losing the amount of weight that you want, don't blame starvation mode.